What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the opinionated hippie. Uh, news alert, even though it's March 1st, it's currently summer here in Texas. We're up in like the high 80s again. So if I pass out, it's because I'm sweating um, or I'm dehydrated or both. Um, so here we are. Welcome to the 2023 Frank Zappa March Madness. March Madness Frank Zappa, colon, the songs. A couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, I started taking votes from people in the comments of a previous video, nominating three, what they thought were their three favorite songs. Um, this is going to be a 32 song bracket only because once we reached 30, then we pretty much were from there until like, from there for a while, we only had songs that had, the, the discrepancy between the votes was not really a discrepancy. And there were four songs, I think 28 through 32, 29 through 32, um, I had to make an ex executive decision on because they all had the same number of votes from like 29 to like 38, 36 maybe. Um, so I decided which ones made it based on strength of schedule, point differential, you know, things like that, plus, my preferences, and also what I thought would make more interesting battles. So we have four brackets of eight, 32 teams total. Uh, they have been seeded um, one through 32, and then those seedings were broken into four separate brackets. And so we have four number one seeds, four number two seeds. So those, you know, each of those brackets will play out, and then they will compete eventually against each other in the semis, and then the finals will be the top two. But this is the first bracket. We're going to call this, uh, we're going to call this the, we're going to call this the South American bracket. Yes, the South American bracket, and you will soon see why. Um, South American bracket, this contains your number one overall seed, which yes, was Inca Rhodes. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly go through each of the head-to-head -head battles, tell you what they are. Then when the video is done, you go to the comments and you vote for each of the four songs you want to win each battle. You have until roughly, I'm gonna say 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, Texas time on Friday, 48 hours to vote. Um, prior to the ending of that vote, the next video might pop up. So be, be watching for that. Um, we're gonna run uh, the first round of the four brackets before we announce the results and then we'll start round two. Uh, so here we go. Round one of the South American bracket starts off with this battle right, boom, there. Yep, number one, Inca Rhodes versus number eight, Montana. Interesting little battle as they both kind of popped up as fully formed songs. Well, Montana popped up as a fully formed form, form song in 72, but Inca Rhodes, bits and pieces of it sort of popped up, but they both sort of reached their sort of, I think, heyday in like 73 and 74. Um, the, the albums that they're on are both m roughly the same musicians that are playing on them. They're roughly from, you know, that same 73, 74 era. Though, again, you can trace parts of them to earlier. Uh, so you have number one, Inca Rhodes, guitar solo. Um, the officially released version that o OSF, uh, One Size Fits All, one of the best guitar solos he ever played. Incredible keyboard solo. If it was live, sometimes you got a great sax solo. You got some good lyrics. You got George Duke singing. You got some great written parts. You got some great drum work. You got some great Napoleon parts on the vocals on the studio version or on the officially released version. Yeah, like it's got everything you want from a Zappa solo, from a Zappa song, and it's the best versions of all of those things. Um, arguably, his best band is on that song. I mean, it's number one for a reason but it's going against Montana. Montana also has a ridiculously good guitar solo, um, even on that studio version. Um, it also has some really great written parts, including Tina Turner and the Ikeettes singing on it. Um, it's got some funny lyrics. It's possibly the only song ever about dental floss in the history of the world. It's got a great outro. It's got some yippee i o k a s in it. Like what more can you want out of a song than some yippee i o k a s or whatever it is he's saying, something like that. But yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm going to say it's a tough one in hopes that it is. I don't think it's going to be, um, but that's it. That's your first battle that you're voting on. Number one, Inca Rhodes, or number eight, Montana. On to battle number two. Number two, we're going to jump to the two seed versus the seven seed. We got this one, uh, More Trouble Every Day and Trouble Coming Every Day. Both receive votes. I combined the votes into one song. Um, I, you know, I know they're essentially different songs, but guess what? Those of you who voted for either one, you get the benefit of both. Uh, more Trouble Every Day versus Penguin in Bondage. Again, 
73, 74 era stuff at the top of this. Um, more Trouble Every Day. An excellent sort of proggy reworking of a freak out song. Great guitar solo action in this, no matter what year it's played in. Um, great band on that early Roxy version. The li later live versions are really good. Keneally gets some really good stuff in on that 88 version. Um, yeah, just an all around pretty fantastic song. A little more straightforward than some of the other stuff. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, great guitar solo. Um, back into like a, a coda finishing sort of chorus. Uh, really, really strong song that produced some amazing solos in like 74. Um, and then you get Penguin in Bondage. Um, again, a song about devices, devices one might use when, you know, doing things with one's loved one. Um, might include rope. Might include nuns, apparently. Um, but you got a Penguin in Bondage, another really kind of funky, good little solo in the middle. Sometimes other people would get solos on other tours. Some really weird written parts, kind of a really weird, funky, avant-garde almost type piece. Not your typical straightforward verse chorus type thing, but one of Frank's sort of weirder little song creations. Um, Penguin in Bondage. So yeah, that would be the uh, next one you're going to vote for. More Trouble Every Day or Penguin in Bondage. Which one are you going to vote for? All right, on to the next battle. All right, we got three versus six. I'm biased here because I once made a I once made a top ten Zappa song video, and one of these two songs was my number one. And number three, we got Peaches in Regalia. Some people voted for Peaches three on Tinseltown and Rebellion. Uh, guess what? You get the benefit of the doubt. You're in, you're in this, um, even though you only voted what only you once that one person. Um, Peaches, great little three and a half instrumental song. Frank sort of semi somewhat classical type compositional skills, which he's sort of taking a theme and sort of just ushering it throughout the duration of the song and giving you like different variations on the same theme. So many amazing versions of this song over the years. I even like the Flo and Eddie live versions. I think those are fantastic. Um, just like an almost perfect instrumental three and a half minute song, Peaches in Regalia. And then you get another instrumental song, uh, Waka Jawaka, um, again, you know, you got a 70s, 69 era song and a 72 song where it's kind of sticking kind of in the same area. I, think either, I don't know if this is making it easier to vote or harder to vote, but a nice longer instrumental, um, really good version of it on that more recent uh, Waka Wazoo release that doesn't have that intro theme to it. It's just got the, the bass groove and the rhythm groove. Um, but yeah, Waka Jawaka, a longer song, a little more jazzy, got some solos in the middle, a uh, nice like written coda at the end. Um, yeah, off the album, Waka Jawaka. So yeah, instrumentals versus instrumentals here. Peaches and Regalia versus Waka Jawaka. That's your third battle. And the final battle, your number four versus your number five seed. Wow, this is an interesting battle because they both come from the same album, Burnt Weenie Sandwich. You got Holiday in Berlin. Again, I made a video about uh, my top 10 songs. One of these songs was on that list. I'm biased on this one. Holiday in Berlin, beautiful written sort of compositional part. The live version with Flo and Eddie had lyrics about a, when they were playing in Germany and there was a student demonstration where things got crazy. Um, a great guitar solo at the end. Early live versions of this started off with the Inca Rhodes, uh, that Inca Rhodes, da -na 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 -na, before it went off into the guitar solo. Um, that, that's not on the officially released version. Um, but yeah, some attitude horns in there. I think the attitude horns are on this. Maybe they're on uh, Prelude or Intro or whatever that first one is called. Um, but yeah, great, great, great song. Um, just majestic. Um, knowing the lyrics, I think, makes the song better, even when you are listening to the instrumental version, because I think the lyrics really work and Flo and Eddie deliver them well. So that adds more to the mystery and the mystique of this song. But yeah, I think it's one of Frank's most perfect compositions but it's going up against Little House I Used to Live In, which has, I think, the intro, that piano intro with Ian Underwood, that may be one of the most perfect things Frank has ever released. Ian plays it so perfectly, the phrasing is so perfectly, just, it is just such a beautiful, delicate little piece, and then it goes off into that do, 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 that awesome little house that we know from like the live Flo and Eddie years. 78 band would do an instrumental version of that Ian Underwood piano thing. Like this song kind of fed the, the Zappa live machine for a long time. The Shake Your Booty Tango is from a little house I used to live in. Guitar solo from a 78 tour. Um, there are just so many absolutely fantastic things um, about this song. The, the Burt Weenie Sandwich version has that awesome solo at the end, the jams at the end. Um, 
uh, the live sort of part at the end. Yeah, I mean, it's this long, indulgent, epic, improvisational piece with this great composed head and this perfect, perfect intro piano thing with by Ian Underwood. Yeah, what are you going to vote for? Holiday in Berlin or Little House I Used to Live In? So there they are, right there. That's your bracket. Pick one in each one. Vote in the comments. If you want to explain why you're picking each one, I'll try my best to read those comments when we get to the next round. I tried last time, but I wasn't very good at it. I'm going to try better this time. But yeah, but that's it. Vote for one of those. Vote for one in each of those pairings in the first round of the South American bracket. Do you know why it's called the South American bracket? Do you? If you don't, listen to Inca Rhodes and then maybe do some historical research and you'll figure it out. But anyways, that's all I got, people. Vote. And then, yeah, that's it. And then pay uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed because we're going to have the next round. It's going to pop up soon. And once the next, not today. Um, and once the next round does pop up, you have 48 hours from the time it is officially loaded till the time I close the polls. So anyways, thanks for voting, people. Thanks for watching. All that kind of stuff. Subscribe, like, all that stuff. And see you probably tomorrow. Peace, y'all.